Hello, everyone. It's me again. Once again, sincere thanks for your time and also your strong support. Today, I'd like to continue on a discussion on the filter design. From this video onward, I'm going to discuss all the various methods how to design a filter. Earlier on series, part one to part four, I actually determined the filter specification. For example, I use different terminologies and also different parameters to describe a filter performance. So from part one to part four, you have an idea how can we actually describe a filter performance. On the part five series discussion, I actually discuss on the L session network. Basically, this L session network determine okay, whether is it a low pass or high pass filter by having a series L or a shunt L, etc. Okay, so if you're keen to understand all this, okay, all this video, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about filter design. For the objective of this video, I'm going to discuss the first filter design by using the image parameter method. This method, in fact, is the easiest method. You don't need to know a lot of know-how to design on the filter. You just follow a standard template in order to design a low-pass filter, which I'm going to illustrate to you now. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks and really thanks you guys ahead for your strong support. There are numerous approach, okay, like what I mentioned earlier on, there are so many numerous approach to the design of filter. The two classic approach in the design of filter are image parameter, which I'm going to illustrate for this video, and also the network method. Image parameter method, in fact, treat the filter design as a transmission line, and we actually implement the design by using the lump element like L and C, which I'm going to show it to you shortly. This actually evolved from two basic types. Okay, one method is called the constant K filter. In fact, later on, I will show you an example how to design a low pass filter by implementing this constant K filter. There is another method which is called the M derived method. Okay, this M derived filter is a modification of the constant K filter. In fact, this is a improved or slightly more control okay, as compared to the constant K method in terms of vary the impedance and also the shape factor. Okay, I hope by now you should be able to understand what is the shape factor. If not, take a look on the series 1 to series 4 discussion in order to understand the filter specification. Another method is the network method. Okay, so this network method is basically what you guys are all very familiar. Okay, for example, we have this Butterworth method and also Chapishio method. Okay, this actually falls onto this network method. It's actually based on frequency response curve or transfer function. Okay, the solution and synthesis of filter design is done by looking up filter design table. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, Okay, those Chapishio method or Butterworth method is actually based on the design table. You actually look at the parameters and you start to design the filter design. Okay, in fact, this is the most popular way to design a filter. Again, these are all the various series which I will going to describe uh, later on on the filter design. Another common filter design is also called a top coupler resonator. So this is a top C coupler resonator. I can also have the L, top L coupler resonator. Another method to design the filter design is actually the director tune band pass filter. Okay, so this diagram is also shown the director tune band pass filter, which I'm going to illustrate later on how we can actually implement a band pass filter by this director tune band pass method. Okay, like what I mentioned earlier on, this will be the focus for this video. I'm going to show it to you 
how can we design a low pass filter by using this image parameter filter? Okay, you don't need to know a lot of know how. Basically, it's a very simple way to kick start a filter design. Okay, so this is what we call a constant K low pass filter design with a T shape. Okay, this thing looks like a T. So therefore, this is what we call a T session, constant K low pass filter. Okay, so this is the design that I'm going to illustrate later on. Okay, so these are the two sets of formula. How can we compute the L and the C value okay, by these two sets of formula? Okay, so this is to compute the inductor value, which is the R, which is the resistor of the input and output over pi. And this is what we call the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. As for the C, is equal to 1 over pi. This is the frequency of the cutoff frequency, and this is the R. Okay, I guess this formula you should be very familiar. Okay, so this is the cutoff frequency, which is 1 over pi square root of LC. Okay, so where the FC is a 3 dB cutoff frequency. Okay, the ultimate rate of roll off of constant K low pass filter is limited to 6 dB per octane for each reactive element. Okay, which means that every one reactive element, I will be able to achieve 6 dB of octane from the skirt. Okay, which means that every one reactive element, I actually contribute 6 dB per octane from the skirt. Okay, for example, a filter consists of two inductor and three capacitor. So from here, I can calculate I have five reactive elements. Okay, six multiplied by five. So therefore, my eventual row off factor will be at 30 dB per octane. Okay, which means that the more reactive element, okay, I will be able to have a steeper row off, okay, which may be desired. The lesser element, okay, which means that I don't need to have a lot of cost to develop this low pass filter, for example. Okay, then therefore I can have a less steep slope as compared to a filter with more higher order of reactive element. Okay, so this is what it means. Okay, I think an example will speak a million word. Okay, let's come up with the first example. Okay, firstly, design a constant K low pass filter with the following spec. Okay, firstly, it actually said that you need to have a roll off factor of 30 dB per octane. The cutoff frequency is 100 megahertz. The resistor is 50 ohm. Okay, so the solution, in fact, will be combining two T section okay, in order to obtain five reactive element for 30 dB per octane. Okay, remember, every one reactive element will contribute 6 dB per octane. So in order to achieve 30 dB per octane, I actually need to have five reactive element. Five multiplied by six, I will actually have 30 dB per octane. Okay, but how to calculate the L and C, which I have illustrated on the previous page. Okay, so this is a set of formula. This is another set of formula. So I compute. Okay, so this R is 50 ohm. I have an input and output impedance of 50. The pi, the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter is 100 meg. So from here, I can calculate my L as 159.1 nano Henry. As for the C, okay, it's actually governed by this equation, which is 1 over pi, cutoff frequency multiplied by R. So from here, you can see that this is pi. Okay, this is my cutoff frequency. This is 50 ohm. So from here, I can compute that my C is 63.7 picofarad. Okay, so now, now let's come to the implement of the design. Okay, I actually need two T session, one over here. So this is one T session. This is another T section. Okay, so from here, you can actually count that this is one, two, three, four, five, six. I actually have six reactive elements. Okay, but I just only need five. But over here, can you see that these two inductor will be combined into one? As you can see from here, these two inductor will be combined into one. And therefore, I actually has one, two, three, four, five. Five reactive elements in order to achieve 30 dB per octane. Okay, so on the design rule here, so this is a T session. Okay, so this is a T session that I, I have it on the previous page. So this is L over 2, L over 2 and C. So I have calculated that my L is 159.1 nano Henry. So I do a divide by 2 okay, as illustrated on this diagram here. 
So this is L over 2, L over 2, and this is C. So L over 2, 159.1 divided by 2, I get 79.6 nano Henry, same as here. As for C, is straight away from this 63.7 picofarad. So this is another T session. Okay, exact value I copy here. So remember, I told you that these two L actually combine. So this 79.6 multiplied by 2, which I actually achieve 159.1 nano Henry. Okay, so this is the design of a low pass filter using the image parameter filter. Okay, you can see that this method, which is relatively easy, okay, you don't really need to have the know how to design the filter. Okay, you just need to calculate the L, you just need to calculate the C, and based on the row of factor, you decide how many reactive elements that you need. So basically, with this, you actually develop a low pass filter with a simple lump element. Okay, from here. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys. Bye for now. Thanks.